next on Diver's Edge. One bite, and he cut that fish in half. Also this week, divers get up close and personal with hungry reef sharks. Welcome to Diver's Edge, I'm Sean Mooney. There are over 300 species of sharks in the world. And most recreational divers might experience one or two sightings, if any, in a lifetime. This week, our cameras will take you to the Bahamas, where encounters with as many as 15 sharks at a time are a daily occurrence for one couple. Let's join them as they share this experience with divers from around the world on Diver's Edge. It is just past 7 a.m. as Stuart Cove cuts bait for today's shark dive. He prepares a mixture of whole ballyhoo and grouper carcass, a natural element of the Caribbean reef shark's diet. Each feeding requires 20 pounds of fish, which is loaded into a specially designed feeding box. Just up the beach, photojournalist Jeff Rotman takes advantage of the early morning sunlight to get some pictures of Michelle Cove. The photos are part of an upcoming magazine feature on Michelle's career as a dive operator and shark feeder. Although she's an experienced underwater model, this is Michelle's first topside photo session. Rotman thinks that these steel chainmail shark gloves will be interesting swimsuit accessories. They convey the rugged spirit behind a deceivingly delicate exterior. Okay, arms out. Great, great smile, keep, okay, now work it, come on. Beautiful. Back on deck, Michelle dons her gloves once again as she prepares to enter the domain of the Caribbean reef shark. The steel armor comes in particularly handy when beauty meets the beast. Although she is significantly outnumbered by these powerful creatures, when it's feeding time, Michelle is the one in control. to the shark buoy. It's located out here in the tongue of the ocean. It's anchored in 8,000 feet of water, and it's being put here by Autech, which is an Atlantic underwater testing and evaluation center. And it's used for submarine research, sonar testing. They use it for Navy war games. But it's formed an ecosystem where we have lots of little fish swimming around the buoys. We got uh, big game fish, marlin, dorado, tuna, and also we have an abundance of silky sharks, which we'll be diving with today. The shark buoy was our first shark adventure. Uh, we were, it's a, frequented by deep sea fishermen because all the, the game fish out there. We were out there game fishing one day and we weren't having very much luck so we tied up to the buoy to try hand line fishing. And as we were tying up we saw all these silky sharks swimming up to the boat. And being macho guys who started to dare each other about who would jump over and swim with them. We all had sticks, we put nails in the end of them, and we went diving with the sharks out at the buoy. We went back to back with each other. With each other. When the sharks swam up to us, we'd jab at the poor little sharks. And that started the shark adventure, the shark dive at the buoy. And after a few dives of doing that, we realized that the sharks weren't gonna bite us again, and we uh, ditched the, the sticks, and we started to bring guests down. We're gonna tie up port bow two. Or I'll pull you up that way to the buoy. The crew quickly ties up, so Stuart can safely back the boat away from the buoy. I'm going to chum up some 
jacks, which is the natural diet of the sharks here, and that'll bring all the sharks in. Then we're going to try to catch one of these jacks and, and feed it to the sharks, and that'll bring more sharks. Okay, the fishing here is not very good. Oh, beautiful. Three sharks. We've got three sharks. It's getting better. Woo, lovely. He's very hungry today. If you get the impression that this display is meant to instill fear in the divers who joined Cove today, you're right. Because out of that fear comes respect, which could save them from serious injury. Ooh, look at that. It's very, very important to keep our hands away from the sharks' mouths. These sharks do have teeth. They do have teeth. These aren't like your neighborhood dogs either. These are wild animals. So you've got to be very careful swimming around them. Their humans aren't part of their diet, but they might mistake that for a piece of fish and could bite it and do that to you. So you want to be careful. Now, since you guys are very experienced divers, I'm going to allow you to touch the sharks body so you can feel this. Make sure you don't touch their mouths. As I said before then, as we saw in that demonstration, they have teeth, very sharp teeth, they're razor sharp. We want to make sure that we touch them back behind the dorsal fin. As the divers descend to 45 feet, they must constantly monitor their depth. There are no visual reference points here, only the blue abyss below. John Cheramella, one of the divers who accompanied Cove on his initial dives at the buoy, quickly attracts a silky. The shark circles curiously, but is hesitant to go for the fish. There is a hook and line stuck in the left side of its jaw, remnants of frequent encounters with fishermen who share a taste for jacks and other game fish. A silky glides in from John's blind side, and he's not ready to give up the bait or his left hand. As the shark circles, John adjusts his grip on the offering. Now he can easily slip his fingers away from the hungry jaws. No one is certain why these sharks are drawn to the buoy. Some believe the thick chain which anchors it to the ocean bottom creates an electromagnetic field that acts as an attractant to the shark's highly developed sensory system. Silky may appear to have the blue-gray coloring of many other sharks. A closer look reveals a copper-colored skin. During his many dives with silky sharks, Stuart Cove has come across a fascinating phenomena. By applying pressure to the nerve endings in the animal's tail, Cove can temporarily paralyze the shark which lies motionless. When he releases his grip, the shark swims away unharmed. Using this trance-like state known as tonic immobility, Stewart will attempt to hypnotize a shark, so Graham Cove can safely free a fisherman's hook from its mouth with a wire cutter.
The patient does not seem willing, but remains still long enough for Graham to successfully remove the hook.